Hi, my name is Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I do house calls in the greater Portland area and also have a home office in Milwaukee. And I'm here today to uh, show you how to make your own tincture out of the hawthorne flower and leaf that uh, usually grows in around May in the Pacific Northwest here. And uh, the hawthorn, it's a Crataegus species. So there's a, a variety of hawthorns. It can be wild or domesticated. Um, little single flowers or very ornate flowers. They're in the rose family. Um, and basically it's a, considered a heart tonic that's been traditionally used in Europe, China, and the Americas, North America. Um, basically, in the spring, you're going to want to pick these when they're blooming, and then later on in the summer when the uh, little berries have come out, you pick those two. And what I like to do is I like to combine both of those tinctures eventually and make a, a tincture that has uh, spring flowers, leaf, and then summer berries. And well, um, let's talk a little bit more about Crataegus here, Hawthorne. Uh, modern medical research shows that it increases blood flow to the heart. It increases the strength of the heart contractions. It uh, also helps lower blood lipids. This is the bad LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. It can reduce blood pressure a little bit, um, be helpful in pr blood pressure formulas. It also helps decrease fatigue and shortness of breath in congestive heart failure. Um, in the traditional Chinese medicine use, hawthorn is supposed to aid in the digestion of really fatty and rich meals. And this kind of makes sense when you think about some of the other uses in that the antioxidants end up preventing the cholesterol in the plaque, um, cholesterol plaques from oxidizing in your vessels. And that's helpful if you're eating a lot of fat rich meals to not, to not get plaquey arteries. Um, so let's see, it's pretty gentle and safe. And um, you can even use this in addition to a variety of pharmaceuticals, although check with your doctor before trying any um, herbs in conjunction with your pharmaceutical program. Um, energetically, Hawthorne is considered to open the heart um, to giving and receiving love, and it's helpful for self-love and self-acceptance, courage, and calming type A personalities, anxieties. Um, Hawthorne is used to treat, once again, congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, recovery from heart attacks, high cholesterol, and it can be part of hypertension formulas as well. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to take you out to the field and we're going to harvest this. Um, <laughs> you're going to see how I harvested this and then we're going to come back here and do something about it. Okay, here we are out in the wetland and there it is. It's a lovely hawthorn tree. Well, <laughs> maybe not the loveliest hawthorn tree. It's kind of scraggly, but it's, uh, it's got its flowers early leaves there and that's what we're looking for so it's lovely look at them just delightful little like little roses in the rose family these have a slight pinkish tint they're white you can see the leaf it's got its characteristic little lobes there you can also find these with a much more multiple flower. These have been cultivated and they can even be just a very bright, brilliant pink too, with a very multiple flower. This is a more wild variety, um, an invasive here. In fact, uh, this area used to have a lot more hawthorn trees. You may have seen that in another video and uh, the local county has actually removed and chipped most of them. But this one's still here. And uh, we're gonna harvest some flowers off it today.
And here's what one of these wild hawthorn trees looks like just out in the wild after it's dropped its flowers. It's just a big green tree for a while until it gets its tiny little red little red apple-like fruit. Look at those leaves. There's a very characteristic leaf lobe. It's very bilateral. As you can see the lobes per leaf can vary kind of depending on the age of the leaf. But they're quite distinctive. Now one thing to note, the hawthorn, it definitely has thorns, big, kind of nasty, nasty little thorns all over it. So when you go to harvest hawthorn flowers or berries, um, you might want to be wearing some gloves just to give yourself a little bit of protection because these are especially pokey, pokey little thorns. See, they're quite big and quite pokey. Okay, a few tips for when you harvest from live trees. Try not to just devastate this poor tree. Try to pick in clumps, leave plenty of good fresh matter on each branch. If you can, move from tree to tree. And don't just strip one tree naked. Um, usually with picking a hawthorn, we'll just be kind of grabbing the easy ones towards the bottom of the tree, and not getting up in a ladder and just decimating a poor tree or anything like that. So be gentle when you harvest. Leave a minimal trace if you can. Let's get started. Glove up! And basically I'm just pulling off clumps of these flowers and leaves. Both the flowers and leaves are good this time of the year um, to make a tincture with. Just kind of move around. Ouch! Got me. This actually smells really wonderful. These are sweet, sweet, delightful flowers this time of year. Now a mature hawthorn tree will tend to grow moss in this area. Try not to get a lot of moss and lichen into your basket. You don't really need that. Oh, there's one. Just throw it out. And yes, there will be bees, and spiders, and all sorts of fun little insects. So, gloves are also nice for that too.
Now there is kind of a funny phenomenon with hawthorn trees. It's that uh, these flowers, they'll look beautiful for a few weeks and then it seems like all of them in the area will just drop all their flowers. They'll all just turn brown and start dropping off like almost all at once as a snow like overnight. So once you start seeing them on the trees, get ready to harvest. Don't wait too long. She might come back and they've all just dropped off and moved on in their life cycle. Whole branches not needed. Now the little branches at the end of the flowers there, the little little branch there, that's actually okay. It's okay to include a little bit of a uh, branch into your tincture. Some people say it adds a little extra medicine potential. And since this is a fairly non-toxic and lovely kind of a tree, and you might worry about like eating too many of the seeds of the berries, but even that's unlikely to really cause any damage in the amount that you'd be trying. So it's a, it's a pretty safe, pretty safe one. Good for the heart. Promotions dealing with the heart and courage. Look at that. Nice basket full of hawthorn flower and early spring leaf. And that's what we're going to take back to the kitchen and make into a tincture now. Okay, we're back. And we are going to tincture these hawthorn flowers and leaves. Um, you can go ahead and leave a little bit of stem on there. Um, but just try to kind of take out any kind of junk you see, like spiders or bees or um, big pieces of moss or something. So we do not actually wash these because they are going to go into alcohol. And also they're a very fine flower. If you were to wash it, you know, some of the good stuff would wash off. Um, so look for, look for any kind of bird droppings too. Get rid of that because we want our tinctures to be relatively clean but the alcohol will sanitize anything that sneaks in there so let's start doing it this one's going to be real easy real simple basically you don't need to chop these up too much because they're very thin they're very light um, you can see just how thin they are that'll extract out just fine without a lot of chopping or blending so basically get your jar and start stuffing it let's see get a little bit more light on this so we can see what we're doing and just kind of look for anything wrong and if you see anything wrong it's got to go here's a little tiny piece of moss a little moss isn't going to kill you either
Okay, so here we are. Um, you want to pack it in, fill the entire jar, and but you don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be so tight that it's difficult for the alcohol uh, to get in all around all the different leaves and flowers and do the proper extraction that you're going to want. Um, so give it a little bounce. You know, pack it in, but not too hard, basically. And then go ahead and add your alcohol. In this case, it's a, uh, it's just an 80 proof uh, vodka. Pretty simple. This doesn't require necessarily really high alcohol content. You might be able to extract more with a higher alcohol content, but I kind of like to do the least necessary alcohol. Um, so this one doesn't need so much. Let's go ahead and add it in. Oh, but wait, we're not up to the top yet. So let's grab another jug. You want to make sure you're all the way to the top. You want to definitely be covering the flowers and leaf with alcohol all the way. Anything that's left at the top that's uh, not covered in alcohol, that could discolor and potentially do other bad things. <clears throat> now, one reason we tincture in alcohol is because alcohol preserves the fresh herbs. I mean, you can't keep these wonderful fresh herbs forever. And they do, in my opinion, lose a little bit of something, some essence, when they're dried. Um, dried herbs can be great, too. Uh, people get good results off of dried herbs as well. But um, a lot of times tinctures are a bit stronger, they extract the compounds better, and also the alcohol itself helps, um, helps your body, your cells absorb it. The alcohol goes quickly across your um, linings and into your cells, and it takes those medicinal compounds with it, so it kind of, um, it helps potentiate the herbs into absorption a little bit quicker than it would without. Now, if you have problems with alcohol, then maybe you probably want to stick with a tea. And this, you could, you could dry these flowers out. It's okay. I'd prefer a uh, a tea made out of the berries myself. But uh, basically, get it in there, tuck it in. Always wipe the edge of your lid so that nothing's stuck in that lid, causing discoloration. Put that jar on. <clears throat> now you're going to want to sit this in a cool, um, dark place to uh, to extract for probably uh, about six weeks. At the minimum, it could stay in there a lot longer. I am of the uh, opinion that you can go ahead and leave that in there until you come around to needing to use it. But some people think it's nicer to take it out earlier. If you take it out earlier, you don't get some of the discoloration and some of the, uh, the more bitter compounds that tend to extract in a longer extraction. But what you do want to try to do is every couple days, kind of give it a shake. Make sure that alcohol is just getting all over to the different areas in there and uh, extracting all the medicinal compounds you want. And that's it. Um, also, make a good label say what the herb is, when it was collected. If you can, where you collected it, because you might want to go back there again someday. And memories aren't always as good as they could be. Um, and, and what you've tinctured that into, if it's a 80 proof vodka, or um, you could get excited, you could put this into a brandy. It would be really nice in a brandy, mix a nice, um, or any other kind of liqueur that you prefer. You can do a hawthorn into that as well, and um, basically, basically you can make it a, a better flavor if you want. But a basic tincture is just a easy vodka, and uh, 
yeah, this you might add into other formulas or just uh, use it just for its, its wonderful heart tonic abilities. Um, and for courage. <laughs> Good luck. Find some hawthorn trees. They're all around and they bloom around May in the Pacific Northwest. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.